As a rogue trader, life is good. You get your own ship, you get your own people to look after, and best of all, you get treated like royalty. So come with me now as we journey through the world of Rogue Trader and I show you what this game has to offer, including its main feature, elf hunting. And a big thank you to Owlcat Games for sponsoring this video as well. And of course, Owlcat Games, famous for the Pathfinder games, so you know they've got plenty of experience in this arena, and this is the first classic RPG in the Warhammer 40k universe, and they've worked closely with Games Workshop to make sure it's authentic, and I think that shines through and gives us an experience in the 40k universe that we've definitely never had before. The game takes place in the Coronas Expanse, an uncharted region at the very edge of human-controlled space, and all these little markers that you see are different systems with all their own little planets in them, so there's a lot of space to check out here. And like I mentioned, you get your own ship and there's a lot to manage in that respect. And it's not just your companions and your upper deck crew that you're going to be looking after. You've got to look out for everybody on board your void ship, even the lower level peasants. For example, I had one situation where some low level engineer type boys that helped keep the ship running were complaining that the guards were being too harsh on them. But the guards reckoned that there was talk of a revolt and maybe some cult like heretic activity. So I had to go down there and investigate and decide who to side with. So you'll have these kind of issues on your ship that you'll need to try and sort out. Otherwise, you'll be traveling around the expanse, warping between different systems. And of course, warping in 40k means going through the warp, which is indeed very risky and sometimes will cause some more undesirable effects on your ship, such as turning some of your crew into plagued Nurgle zombies, requiring you to cleanse them with holy fire. So the role of a rogue trader is to push the boundaries of human space and be an explorer, basically. And with this little thing that you have called the Warrant of Trade, it gives you immense power and privileges to basically do what you want in the world, which is part of you getting treated like royalty. So you must also be a shrewd diplomat as well as an explorer. But of course, this is 40k and nothing's ever goddamn simple and everything's always horrible. So you'll be dealing with the turmoils and struggles of various worlds and factions and all kinds of different people. And that takes you all over the place. There's so many different kind of environments that you go through. That's what I always love about the 40k universe. And it's represented really well in this game, as you'll probably notice throughout this video and all the different environments we go through. Not to mention all the different enemies that'll come along with that. Some of which will make you want to cry when you remember that you're a puny human. False believers. And obviously, being an RPG, it's all about the story, and there's a hell of a lot of dialogue to get through, so I hope you can read. It is mostly written dialogue in this game, there is some voice acting on the main characters, but mostly you're going to be doing a lot of reading. And of course, like any good RPG, there will be choices and decisions to make, many of which will be pretty damn impactful. I don't want to spoil anything, but one decision I made, for example, lost me a companion. So, needless to say, that's a pretty big consequence of a decision I made. I also really came to appreciate that they didn't shy away from using 40k language because it can be a bit much to read, especially if you're new to the universe. For example, the cogitator systems of this temple of the Omnisire are subordinate to the shell whose repository serves the machine we see before us. A machine created for your predecessor and one that uses the biological signatures of dynastic blood in its computations. The spirit should recognize the ship's master and submit to his will. Should. If you don't know anything about 40k and that made any sense at all, I commend you. But this is great, right? It helps immerse you in the 40k universe properly, especially when talking to Mechanicus, who talk like that more than anyone. But yeah, a lot of great dialogue, well written, that really immerses you in this world. Now to give you more of an example of some exploration and combat, here I go warping to a system I haven't been to before, the Nameless Star System. As I arrive here, the Voxmaster of my ship tells me that there's another rogue trader in this system, so I tell my boy to hail their ship so we can have a little chat and see what's going on. But we're met by their Vox Master instead of the rogue trader himself. And she tells us that he went down to one of the planets where a crashed Eldari ship was because he wanted to finish them off. But he's been down there for like 30 days. So she's a little bit worried. And me being such a great guy that I am, I offer to go and try and find him and obviously kill all the elves. So I fly my way over to this little planet called Quetzatema, which is a bit of a foresty jungle world, but nothing my absolute crack team can't handle. As for the companions of this game, there's some great ones there. A nice mixture from different factions and different races. We've got a sister of battle here. We've got an Adeptus Mechanicus boy and a mother heckin' Space Wolf. That's right, you get to fight alongside a Space Marine. And these are all pretty interesting characters in their own right with some solid voice acting. <coughs> I hope you're not going to put off the feast. Our escape demands a grand celebration. There are none more faithful to the God Emperor than my sisters. We fight against his enemies by the will of the Holy Ecclesiarchy. We... 
I beg your pardon, rogue trader. Here I am. So this is great to me. I think it's important to have companions traveling with you that you actually like. You can also play this game in co-op with friends, though, or you can even make your own companions. And of course, you do make your own character, which you will level up. And of course, there's tons of stats to improve yourself as you go. A lot of different ways to build your character. And there's a massive arsenal of weapons to choose from as well for your different characters. Las guns, plasma, melter, flamer, bolter, you name it, we've probably got it. And then of course there's the class and the archetype and all the different skills that you can have. There's a lot to get into here. It's based on the D100 system, which means absolutely nothing to me, but if you're a tabletop nerd, that might mean something. But it's all ultimately dice rolls and skill tests, both in and out of combat. I've personally been enjoying dual bolt pistols with the dual weapon expert ability, which basically gives me an extra attack so I can use both pistols at least once per round. Anyway, back to the mission, I land down on this planet and find the other rogue trader ship with the description the winter scale shuttle awaits its owner's return, but we'll never see him again, which sounds a little ominous. So we push on, finding some wreckage, finding no, some little bunkers in the area, and I run around through this jungly forest, which apparently is designed to get you lost, and that is what I feel like as I run around this for about 15 minutes before I find anything, eventually stumbling across my favourite site, Dead Elves. But unfortunately, some of these elves have survived their crash, so we've got to change that with a tactical turn-based battle, which you will be doing a lot of in this game, of course. It's a pretty familiar system with movement points and action points and abilities to buff yourself up or to debuff your enemies or to synergize with your companions. So you can get pretty deep on the tactics and strategies with all this. In the case of this fight, I beat down the close range Eldari pretty easily, but they had a lot of long range boys with powerful long range rifles, but they were spread out quite far and it made it difficult to get rid of them. I tried to rush those long range boys and unfortunately everyone died except for, of course, the space wolf who thankfully was able to hold it together and finish the job. These damn elves put up a good fight, I'll give them that. From here I continued on and got lost in the forest some more. Did a little bit of looting along the way though of course, eventually stumbling across this little situation. A fleeing elf eventually blasted down by a well-dressed man. This is the other rogue trader we've been looking for, and hey, what do you know, he's alive, his party's alive, and we get to team up with them. As they're going on an elf hunt and they invite us along, and you know I'm not gonna say no. Long story short, I get lost in the forest a bit more before eventually finding these final elves and the boss, burning them to a crisp and cleansing this land of the Xeno scum. Getting a taste for elf hunting, I venture around a few more systems, eventually coming across this icy world with word of something going on down there. So we head on down to have a look, eventually running into this little situation. Stinking elves. Arguably a worse kind of elf in Drakari, but we'll save this little fleeing guy's life with a bolt pistol round here and a space marine kick there. Although they did send even more elves to the slaughter, which was perfectly fine with me, but they were no match for my powerful team of bros and sister, and were quickly dispatched, saving the little guy that was running away. And what's his story? Well, I guess you'll have to find out yourself if you really want to. I didn't much care, I was just there to kill elves, really. And uh, one of the first elves I actually ran into in the game was quite a polite one who greeted me very nicely in the middle of a city. Very calm situation, but I don't converse with enemies of humanity. Attack! The little cheeky elf turned into a puff of smoke and disappeared for now, but I eventually found her later and took care of her. And yes, I know, this was a companion that I killed off, but you think I'm going to work with an elf? Come on. And no, this isn't the companion I talked about losing earlier. That was actually another one. These kind of actions, though, all play into the Puritan or Fanatic system. You can make dogmatic good guy decisions or iconoclast kind of in the middle decisions or heretical bad guy decisions. This, of course, showing what kind of person you are and will shape the way that people see you in the world and give you kind of more or less options depending on what kind of person you are and also interacts with companions. So there's that kind of good guy, bad guy system. But the point I'm trying to make here with these little examples is the fun of going out and exploring and seeing what you find. Personally, I love a game where you can just run off in a random direction and discover stuff that you may have never found otherwise. Because it's not part of the main story, it's just a little optional side quest, but they can very often be some of the best content, like finding this little Inquisition shipwreck here. Landing down on this icy planet, you find the shipwreck taken over by ice itself. Corpses everywhere with gunshot wounds in the back of their head, shot point blank, one by one. What the hell went on here? As you explore, you see a little apparition of things that went on. You see some Inquisition boys blasting down a bunch of people. But why? What's all going on here? Well, you explore, you find out, and maybe you've got to make a decision. So you've got a whole lot of the main story to play. You've got a whole ton of side quests and optional stuff to explore. But you've also got a bunch of planets under your jurisdiction and you've got to upgrade them. This will give you more resources that you can mine from all over the planets as well. 
Because, you know, you are a trader and an expert merchant after all. You'll be trading with other factions, building reputation with them. Your ship is upgradable as well with better components. Because you will be using it in turn-based space battles as well. You'll have those that you might run into as you travel around. So there's a whole lot of game here. But you don't have to get involved in all of it. I haven't really bothered too much with the trading yet or with the space battles very much. So you can lean more towards what you enjoy. If I had to make one complaint of the game, I would say combat is maybe a little overcomplicated because when I go to level up a character and I go to level up one skill point and I'm met with like 25 different abilities that I can choose from, all with pretty in-depth descriptions of what they do, it's a little overwhelming. At least for someone like me who doesn't have a ton of experience in these kind of games or in tabletop games, it's a little confusing to take it all in, especially when you times it across the six characters that you've got to bring in a party, it's a lot. But it's not a major problem as you can just kind of do what I do and just find a few things that work and then stick with that. You don't really have to overcomplicate things. But otherwise, that's Rogue Trader, and I think it's a pretty damn solid game, and if you're a 40k fan, you're most likely going to love the in-depth nature of the game and how deep it thrusts you into the world of 40k. It may not have some of the big fancy budget and tech that other classic RPGs might have, but it gives us something that no other 40k game does, and that's just a really broad view of the universe of 40k. It's not just like one little snippet of the 40k universe like most 40k games do. There's a lot here. You interact with lots of different races, lots of different factions, lots of different worlds, all kinds of different lore from different aspects of 40k. It's great. Personally, I didn't even know what a rogue trader was until this game. I'd never heard of that in 40k before, so it's good to expand your 40k knowledge as well. It has for me anyway. If you like the look of Rogue Trader and you want to find out a little bit more, there's a link below in the description. Check that out if you wish. Rogue Trader is also on PlayStation 5 and Xbox, not just PC, so everyone can enjoy it. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.